Pesticides are expensive. They become less and less effective as pests develop resistance to them, and they come with some environmental and health risks. Integrated pest management, or IPM, involves planning and using a wide variety of methods to help prevent or manage pests while keeping costs and risks low. IPM offers an economical and robust toolkit that you can use to help produce high quality, high yielding products in a sustainable agribusiness. Growers, scouts, extension personnel, and egg industry representatives are constantly improving these practices through research and experience. The process can be broken down into the following five components. Firstly, you need to identify the pest and beneficial organisms and then find out about their life cycle and habitat. Correctly identifying the pest ensures that the crop problem is not due to other agronomic issues. What does the pest look like? When and where is it found? For help, you can check in print publications and online or talk to Ontario Ministry of Agriculture and Food Crop Management specialists, researchers at the University of Guelph, experienced scouts, and ag industry representatives. Secondly, you need to monitor your crops, visually inspect your plants for pests, take samples, and make records to get an estimate of the size, stage, and location of pest populations. Use insect traps to help track pest development over the season and determine if and when you need to take additional action. Keeping up to date with the data on temperature, rainfall, humidity, and leaf wetness allows you to gauge both the development of your crop and the development of pests. Make use of models such as Doncast or Cougar Blight. These models do not replace monitoring, but predict when you may need to do more. You could base your decisions on an action threshold, the point at which the pest population must be controlled in order to prevent unacceptable damage to your crop. For instance, with downy mildew and cucumbers, weather forecasts help to predict its development and help determine when it is time to protect your crop from that pest. Another benchmark you could follow is the point at which the pest population must be controlled in order to prevent financial loss. This is the economic threshold. For example, corn must be kept weed free from the 3 to 10 leaf stage in order to maximize yields while controlling weeds after that period just doesn't justify the cost of the control. The fourth step of integrated pest management is choosing what combination of control methods you'll use. Plant breeders and geneticists are constantly developing crop varieties to be more resistant to diseases and insects. However, pests reproduce rapidly and they are continually developing resistance to different crop varieties. Through meticulous breeding and genetic improvements, researchers are always trying to stay ahead in this genetic arms race. It is important for you to stay up to date and choose seeds that suit your specific needs. With cultural methods, you can change the crop environment so that it is less hospitable for pests while providing better growing conditions for a healthy crop. Start smart. Make sure your fields are well drained, your seed is clean, your plants have good nutrition, and that they're properly spaced. Rotate your crops. By growing the same crop in the same field year after year, you are encouraging pests to make themselves at home. For example, with corn rootworm or wireworm, growing corn after corn every year encourages those pests to develop, compared with a long-term rotation of corn, beans, and wheat. Also, consider your cover crop options. Cover crops help improve soil health and they can shade out weeds, leaving you with a more healthy, pest-resistant crop. Pests have natural enemies that can help keep pest numbers below treatment thresholds. This is called biological control. You can encourage these natural enemies by providing food and shelter for them and avoiding chemical controls that harm them. Physical controls include setting up physical barriers to keep pests away, physically removing the pest, and practicing cautious sanitation to remove the pest's habitat or food source. The last option in an IPM program is chemical control. There are a wide variety of natural or synthetic pesticide products available each with unique characteristics and different modes of action. 
using a combination of different pesticide products and timings works best and helps prevent pests from developing resistance. If it is necessary to spray, use pesticide products wisely. Read the entire label carefully, wear the right personal protective equipment, calibrate your sprayer, and record the details of all of your actions. Finally, evaluate. Look over your records and ask yourself, did your IPM program work? Did you correctly identify the pests? Did you use the right thresholds? Which methods of control worked the best? Good records provide a history of pests and of your IPM program from year to year. Keep up to date on IPM techniques. Make sure you and your employees are on the same page about your IPM program and let suppliers, customers, and the public know you are using IPM. Integrated pest management takes commitment, but it's good for business. These five components can help you to continue to produce high quality products economically with the lowest impact on human health and the environment.